Hello everybody, Day Drinking with David again. Um, really excited to be back. I'm especially excited because we're drinking mezcal today and I, uh, oh Whiskey Badger, you're the best. You're always first. Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just so in love with mezcal and, uh, and I've been drinking a lot of it probably by volume since the quarantine. I have to say, probably more mezcal than anything else. And that's saying something. Um, we've got a couple of really super special rare ones to taste today. And um, and also I'm gonna evaluate a new, well, not a new line, an old line. An old line that's been relaunched, new bottles. You may remember these in the old squat bottles. We sold them, uh, I think back when they were, um, you know, 80 proof and pretty inexpensive. This is an old name, El Rey Zapoteco. Um, it's a famous brand. It's, a, it's, it, it's one of the real first premium mezcals available in, in the United States. Um, doing really good, man. Uh, uh, thanks for asking. How are you guys all doing? And this is, this is um, you know, this is from sort of the heart of mezcal production in terms of volume. Um, I'm convinced that a lot of the, the, you know, um, the way, the popular places from, you know, where you see mezcal in the States, the, the popular brands are simply a factor of ge geography. These are the easiest. And it's the same with any spirit, you know, cognac is popular partly because it was available. They had a river they could make good stuff, but also they could get it to market. Um, and this is a brand that started in the 60s, the Hernandez family in um, Matetlan. Uh, they are, you know, all artisanally produced. Um, you know, these are, these are small batches. This is all distilled last year. Uh, Hernandez Escobar family. So we got a nice mix up of different fruit, well, plants. Um, doesn't have a lot of information about where the, the, the agave was grown, but we'll, uh, we'll get in there and taste these, see how, how this, this brand is, um, you know, sort of my baseline for, you know, what I expect a good quality mezcal to be, um, is, is all here, uh, number, you know, the village where it's made. I think that's a very important part, preferably the distiller. Um, they're usually, for good mezcal should just be one, maybe two. Um, there are blended brands uh, that aren't bad, but I think um, you know you want to have all that information right on there. The type of agave certainly is important, um, although a relatively new phenomenon uh, to 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 necessarily list that type and and certainly highlight it. So today we've got. The Espadin, uh, their sort of flagship, that would be their entry level. Um, we're going to evaluate them. I haven't tasted these in the new packaging, a new form. Uh, and then uh, Tepestate, which is a plant I really like. Quiche, which is um, Karwinski, uh, one of the various uh, expressions of Karwinski. And Tola, which is um, Potatorum, which is a fabulous um, agave. Although, Unfortunately, they don't tell us which type this is. There are a number of different types of tola. Different areas call it a different thing. Um, the two main ones um, are uh, sort of like the difference is like small heads or big heads. Um, and uh, anyway, they have different flavors, but it's also, it, it, it's hard to get exact details on these. So let's just go and crank through these and see what we like and if, the price is right, we'll bring them into the store. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> oh. uh, here we go. The Joven. So generally, when, when tasting spirits, I use the same glass across the board. Um, I think for enjoying mezcal, um, this type of glass, or an open wide copita style glass, is preferable for pure enjoyment. This you're gonna have a better experience with this. 
but because I've been tasting spirits and mezcal in particular in the same glass for many years, I kind of like to have a baseline. It's the glass I taste almost all spirits out of. Actually, it's the glass I taste all spirits out of um, because, you know, got to give everything a fair shake. So, if, you know, if I switch to this and suddenly all the mezcal I taste is amazing, you know, then we got a problem. Anyway, this has a great nose. I can already smell it. Mm -hmm. Pepper, very classic sort of espadine. Some fruit, some good fruit. A little bit, a uh, little bit of that vegetal stuff, but not well, obvious. Not strongly smoky by any means. Hints of barbecue. We talked about this before. I'm, you know, usually trying to avoid over the top uh, tequila and coke. Hello, thanks for saying hi. Um, over the top smokiness that, that's generally considered a flaw in quality mezcal. I mean, even though these are roasted um, in the ground over smoke, it, it, that feeling of charry carbonized smoke really is atypical for, for quality mezcal for a number of reasons, mostly because, you know, they, they, they tend to firstly put a layer of um, um, volcanic rock or something like that in between the agave and the actual smoldering embers. Uh, oh, I'll see you later, man. Thanks for coming by. You'll see the rest of this uh, up on the IG in a little while once we're done. And, uh, whoa, Chastler. Nice. How you doing, man? Great to see you, buddy. Um, sorry, I'm reading comments and trying to taste. And so you don't have too much actual burning going on in the agave itself. Sometimes you'll have a little carbonized bits. Good producers t t typically sort of hack those off. And then the agave in, 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 in general, I mean, good production, there's another step of sort of pre-fermentation step that, um, good here, man, I'm glad you're safe. Um, there's no sorry about that. Um, the, uh, I got to turn off my, uh, my ringer somehow here. I don't know how to do that while I'm, uh, online. Anyway, um, the, there's a pre-fermentation step, which happens in a lot of good quality mezcal. Um, <laughs> my wife is baiting me. Yes, this is perfect mezcal for, uh, for making cocktails. I'm sure the price is excellent. We're still evaluating it, so it's not in stock yet, but hopefully, uh, it'll be something we'll want to stock in the future. Um, and they're gonna, uh, they're gonna leave the agave out for several days, um, before actually committing fermentation. This starts a bacteriological and, and actual fungal breakdown of, the, of this, um, come on. Oh, my wife is jabbing me, jabbing me. The bartender is questionable at my house, she says. Hmm, hmm, well. I guess uh, you do make a mean hot toddy. I'll give you that, babe. So, good, clean nose, very typical, classic style. The brand here, it's an old brand, Ray Zapoteca. New expressions, we haven't tasted these before. They're not in stock, we're evaluating them live. Hmm. Good body, a little more smokiness on the palate. Definitely has some mesquite quality to it. Um, we are, you know, we're not talking a, too, a ton of mezcal from, from this village. Matatlan is, you know, this is where some of the very industrial distilleries are. Um, you know, Zapoteca is, a, I call it a medium size, you know, certainly not industrial by any means. You, you know, you, you, one of the first proper-ish distilleries you get to leaving Oaxaca City in that direction. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. I mean, we'll have to see what the price is. Um, uh, you know, I wouldn't, um, I don't know. Let's, let's continue across the, uh, the brands. Um, you know, we were talking briefly about the different things that I look for in a new um, mezcal, certainly uh, the Maestro Mezcalero's name, the village. One thing that we really want to see is is a, a proof that's at least minimum 90, 90. You know, I, I'm I'm a you know I'm a bit of a um, 
what's the word? Uh, yeah, I like I like intense things and flavors, and I sort of, um, you know, certainly prefer mezcal or agave spirits typically that haven't been adjusted with water. Um, that's not super doable for more um, many of the more commercial brands because uh, you have a lot of issues with um, you know hand labeling them and just a, a, a lot of hoops to jump through to understand that people want to find a place and certainly if the Maestro Mescalero prefers it at a, at a certain proof you know that's their prerogative I you know I tend to like the the body and acidity that's given when you're adjusting with heads and tails um, but the other concern of course is that um, using this process can can take a mezcal outside of the uh, regulatory um, limits for certain chemicals which is why so many of the great traditional mescaleros have moved outside of the do um, because they're not able you know it's it's odd because you get different um you get different stories about why people do or don't um, certify. Some will say the cost, but um, from what I can tell, it's relatively affordable. Although there is a lot of bureaucratic paperwork um, in terms of like each batch having to be certified. Um, it's not like crazy expensive, um, but for a little guy in the middle of nowhere, that, that could be, you know, 400 pesos or 900 pesos, well, that's getting up there, but that they don't have or don't seem, see the uh, the reason in, in um, uh, spending. Um, here we go with the Karwinski. This is Quishi. They don't seem to list, uh, like very, you know, very few people do, um, the source of the plants in here. Mm hmm but you know I'm sure these are purchased on the open market I don't know maybe these guys are farmers too I don't have the details I probably should have looked that up before I tasted them to give them a fair shake but this is pretty classic Karwinski more green it's pretty restrained as some of them go more more pepper some tropical fruit some melon What's, what are you laughing at, Kalina? Is that Kalina? Mm -mm -mm. Hmm. Yeah, I like, um, I like that. I think uh, I usually want a little bit, there's some heat on the back end, even at 90 proof. Um, an interesting little take on it. Here, I'm gonna save the Tepestate for last because those tend to be pretty intense. Probably should have done the Tobala before the Karwinski. Um, same idea. Um, so this is, yeah, yeah. You know, there's sort of this um, this trend in in mezcal to have a ton of information on the labels for good quality products. I think that's you know. It's, it's, we're sort of a more information, the better. Um, sometimes when you, um, Jason kind of from Cinco Sentidos mentioned this on, on one of our, our IGs, but sometimes when you just list all the details, you kind of forget the story behind the producers and the, the, that's all the focus is it becomes more of, um, you know, a checklist than, um, than informative um, to give you an idea of the soul of the mezcal and where it comes from, the people who made it. Um, but I'd rather have the information than not. So, you know, the age of the, the plants, you know, when they were harvested, when they were distilled, those sorts of things, um, which Jason does really nicely in this sort of um, prose style label on the back of each of his bottles. Um, hmm. This is a very easy going tola. We're tasting an old brand from um, Matatlan. 
El Rey Zapoteco started in the 60s. New release of these, you know, we used to come in the goofy square bottles. Now they're in tall bottles at 90 proof. So we're evaluating them for the store. They're not purchased yet. Um, you know, seeing if we like them. I don't have a sense of the pricing at all. I sort of usually taste before I ask. Um, but it's an old brand and, you know, they deserve to be considered, um, you know. Ooh, some tea, herbal stuff. Good fruit on the nose. I like that Tola. It's not very distinctive, um, but nothing wrong with it. Uh, I wonder what the prices are like. Um, and we'll have a look. Uh, now Tepestate. This is a really, really interesting plant. Marmorata, you see these growing on hillsides. Quite a large, slow growing plant. They're very distinctive flavor-wise, tend to be either quite peppery or maybe have um, certainly some mineral qualities and then into the, like, I meant like black pepper, into like the jalapeno, green pepper, chili stuff. Let's see if this has any of that stuff I like, flavors I like. Not everybody does. A little bit, a little bit. Not a, not a smacky around tepe, tepe by any mean. Mm, some mineral quality. Um, but not a big dog. You know, it's hard to tell with these because there's no information about them. Sometimes you'll see producers rest these for quite some time, um, which takes a lot of that pungency and softens it. There's a chance that they could have done that here. Um, also, you know, different fermentation techniques can af affect the ultimate flavor how they're roasting and chopping, whether they're doing a uh, post-roast, um, you know, uh, settling of the plants, which is typical for high quality mezcal. This is, uh, yeah, this is a pretty easy going tip of it. Okay, cool, we tasted those. Pretty interesting stuff. We'll have to look up pricing, see if they make sense for the store. Um, you know, a good old brand. Hopefully we can make it work for some of these. I think the Toba La is certainly the most interesting and maybe if the price is right, we'll put it out there. Now for the main event, two really unique, special spirits um, that we do own and that you should own too because this is really special stuff. The first is a tiny batch of Baril from uh, a special label for uh, our, our, from our friends at Vago. This is Tio Rey in the village of um, Sola de Vega. Um, actually, that's, that's more like the region. I'm sure there's a more specific village, um, but that's, the name's escaping me right now. Um, and this is an area that's typically using clay pots. And Tio Rey is a very, very high quality producer. One of the few sort of that you can get ancestral uh, stuff that's not crazy expensive. Um, that's something that Vago has been really, really good about. And this is a, this is a limited batch. Um, I'm not sure why they put it in this special label, maybe just because it was so obviously excellent. Baril is quite a rare Car style of Karwinski with quite sort of a, uh, a kind of a fat, stout stature. Karwinski is a, a, a breed of agave, varietal of agave that tends to um, produce different style plants. Um, from what I can tell, kind of at random. I mean, I, I, I assume that, you know, uh, if you put two barils together, you'll get more barrel. But um, it's been difficult for anybody down there or up here to explain exactly why, uh, why um, uh, Denver, yes, I, I talked about this at the beginning. I taste out of the, the um, I taste out of the Glen Cairn because that's what I've always tasted out of. And so when I'm evaluating spirits, um, I kind of stick to that because your glasses are so wonderful. They just make everything taste awesome. So uh, that's uh, our dear friends from 
uh, Denver and Lily, the uh, glass manufacturer in Australia, and they have an incredible agave glass that I should be drinking out of. But you know, I'm actually working here. Six. 6 a.m. in the morning. Wow. Well, well, it's time for a glass of mezcal. Mezcal is the best thing to drink during the day. Keeps you up, doesn't make you tired. Um, you know, you can kind of sip it all day long without much negative effect. Um, the, back to the, the, the product at hand, um, this is only 245 liters produced. Uh, and... Uh, Denver, uh, yeah, check out the whole thing. It'll be up on IG uh, a little bit later. You'll be mad because I mentioned the Copita, but I should have had your glass. I, I don't have it in hand. It's at the store. So I'll grab one next time and we'll drink out of that. Um, do a head to head. Uh, and distilled on clay pots, very, very traditional. Um, you know, I had a couple of, uh, more than one um, mezcal geek uh, across the country reach out to see if we'd be getting this. Um, you know, it's so special, partly be, uh, Whiskey Badger asked uh, if I can elaborate on the reason this is so special. It's so special because one, Tio Ray, who is already a very good, well-regarded producer, doesn't make Barrio regularly, and certainly when he does, it's like usually it's a, an ensemble, so he'll take a few piñas and put it in a batch. But a straight Barrio is not, is pretty rare. So they either acquired some fruit or had some some fruit maturing in their fields, um, uh, and uh, whatever the result was deemed to be um, so special enough to merit a special black label. Um, and we're gonna taste it. I mean, the, the simple answer is it tastes freaking awesome. Ah, here we go. So now in a very different range in terms of the flavor compared to the last ones, those were copper pot distilled. Um, this is clay pot distilled. You're going to get m many more um, nuanced flavors here, but now we're moving into a almost floral quality, a pungency that, that didn't exist in the last ones. Very mineral driven. What's... Uh, no Irish whiskey. It's mezcal today. It's mezcal today. I don't know why. Mezcal Tuesday. Feeling... Feeling like drinking mezcal. Uh, this is the Vago Barrio. I'll leave it there for everybody to see. Maybe. Does that help? Oh, can you see that? No, whatever. Um, and, wow, this has a nose. Licorice, almost like some chocolatey notes, some darker flavors. There's a good explanation. Denver says the... Uh, the cost of straight barrel is astronomically expensive. It's very rare to see it anywhere. They're just, they're just not reg, you know, because it's a, it's a, a type of Karwinski that doesn't exist everywhere. It doesn't um, come together very often as a, as a straight uh, selection, just exquisitely rare. And, and the, here we're talking about a hundred bucks, which is expensive of course, but also for what it is, ancestral barrel from a good producer that we know, um, it's really quite affordable considering the time and effort that goes into producing this spirit. These are very slow growing plants. God, there's a great mineral quality. Oh, Whiskey Badger's in. Hell yeah. Mmm. Ooh, that's not getting spit out. That's get, that's going all the way down. Um, Wow, that has, you know, it has this freshness that is so unique. You expect, you expect intensity of flavor, which is there. There's a texture there, but almost this, not oceany quality. It is like a little bit of oyster shell. There is a little bit of, like if you're ever at the base of a big waterfall, that that water, in, moisture hitting rock, that kind of intensity. Yeah, Mezcal from Vago, really good. You know, obviously sad, sad news on this brand. You know, the patriarch of the family passed away this last month, I guess. Um, and so we we drink this in reverence to him and to, to Judah and the family who have brought these wonderful spirits to the world in a, you know, very affordable way. Um, and I'm, I'm sure they're, 
you know, reeling down there still from what's gone on, but, um, you know, we're still in, 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 you know, fully supportive that brand, regardless of how that, that moves forward. Mm -mm. Oh, that is very, very drinkable. That's dangerous. Be careful with this guys. Um, so there were about 15 cases in the warehouse. He will, he will be missed. Very sad. Aquilino. Uh, and we took 10. So it's, I mean, it's gone. That's what we have is it. Um, and uh, yeah, highly recommend. My operations guys went nuts for it. They all bought a bottle. Um, people are loving it. Um, definitely one of the, the more interesting expressions from T.O. Ray and, uh, you know, surprisingly not as expensive as I think it could be. I, I'm sure we could tack another 20, 30 bucks and get through the 60 bottles that we were had access to. Um, beyond that, uh, We've got something really, really special here, um, moving into a whole different category. This is a brand that's been famous in Mexico for quite some time, Pal Alma. 100 bucks is cheap, yeah, even in Mexico. Um, and um, this is from Alma, Mes uh, Alma Mescalera, is that right? Yeah. Alma Mescalera, um, these guys, or it's one guy, he's sort of been described as like Mescal, Indiana Jones. He's, he's like, uh, he's just the man, um, Eric Rodriguez. And uh, he goes and to the most far flung parts of, of Mexico, selects one producer, um, and works exclusively with them in whatever area. Uh, so no competition uh, between people. Um, and you know, the guy will go anywhere and finds this incredible stuff. This particular spirit is ultra rare. Um, it's from San Luis Potosi. Uh, the village or community they call it is Peñasco. And uh, this is pretty unique stuff. They, this goes in his Pal Alma range. Um, which is sort of um, reserved for pachuga or a flavored spirits, I mean flavored pre-distillation. Um, and the reason that this falls in this line, even though it doesn't have any meat in it, is that um, they're adding during fermentation up to 30% pulque. And pulque is a, um, is an, drink, uh, a Mexican drink, like a light beer made from the um, nectar of agave. It's very, very different process than production of agave spirits. Agave spirits take um, the heart of the plant, roast it to extract the sugars, um, and ferment those. In this case, what happens is, in the case of Polke production, um, they cut the Quixote, which is the flower that the, you know, this plant spends its entire life sort of preparing to produce. Um, and then they uh, scrape the insides, the center, uh, and that produces um, like agave honey. It's like the syrup, and, and this is the product that is fermented. Often it begins fermenting naturally and, and it ferments inside the plant. You can, the great big plants, and they collect the pulque, and then the next day they come back and collect more. Um, and, um, and it's pretty unusual f f flavor-wise. Um, often it's like, can be um, flavored with other things, guava or pineapple or whatever. Um, it has, um, uh, you know, a light alcohol uh, component. So it's a little bit of beer. Um, sort of agave beer, but a different process, so no cooking uh, going on. And um, so what they do with this is they roast the agave, uh, they crush it on, uh, uh, they crush it, I gotta turn off that phone. Um, they crush it on the, uh, it is a very, very interesting and unusual process. And it's something, you know, people are always like, oh, can you get pulque in the States? And, and the, the, the short answer is no, um, there are bottled, 
canned versions of pulque, which are industrially produced. And I would generally say those are terrible, um, that ones I've had. Um, Denver's noting that it gives you a little bit of a different buzz. Uh, he says it's a little, a little bit like a sm smoking the old uh, Mary Jane, um, which I've not experienced. Um, but I also haven't drunk that much bulky. I've had it one or two times, and you get a big jug of it, and you're kind of like, wow, that's a lot of uh, liquid to handle. Um, but it's fun to drink, sort of as a side chaser to mezcal. Um, so this is 672 bottles. It the agave here is. Samiana, which is the typical agave of the region. Um, and they, as a normal mezcal, roast it, chop it, stone, stone, tohono press, typical, um, and then into the fermenters with 30% pulque. Normally, we'd see uh, agave fibers uh, and juice in a fermenter, and maybe it, it ferments by itself for a little while, and then you add a little water, and then that completes fermentation over the course of several days. Um, in this case, no water, but just the, the pulque, so the, the fermented uh, agave nectar. Um, and that ferments for eight days before being double distilled on a copper pot with a condenser. And I think in San Luis Potosi, I've seen pictures of this particular distillery. The condenser they're talking about is not the refrescadera that we would see in southern um, Oaxaca. It is um, this sort of UFO style kind of p plates. They, they're these odd, um, uh, the, these odd like uh, saucers and they kind of come up from the still and this is an added rectifying element. Um, and then this is bottled at 50% uh, um, alcohol no heads, no tails. They just cut the hearts and voila, that's it. Um, they include whatever heads or tails. So there's no adjustments after distillation. They, they collect their hearts, what they've deemed uh, to be uh, quality and um, bottle it. So let's have a taste. Um, this is stuff that we've only been able to get in Mexico previously. Um, hopefully we'll see more of this lineup. It's extremely limited. I mean, 672 bottles sounds like a lot. But for the thousands of, you know, clamoring um, uh, mezcal geeks out there, it's really not. Um, so let's have a little nosing here. Whoa. So this has that, that green pepper, leafy, oh, funk to it. A little bit of that, you know, VA thing, a little acetone, which... Doesn't scare me. It's in wine here. It's not smoky, it's funky. Now we're getting earthy, herbal, lots of sort of bitter herbs, quinine, wormwood. Hmm, God. That is wild. This is out there stuff. Mmm, pretty on the palate. It's got a lot of acidity. You'd expect that. Um, quite angular, full. There is this mineral quality, which um, is really hard to describe. Like white pulverized rock. Mmm, mmm. Juicy, citrusy, so unique. Wow. Nothing drinks like this on the planet. This is very, very special spirit. Um, we're extremely lucky to have this. And the Barril, um, this is really expert stuff. And, you know, not inexpensive again, but for in terms of what's going into these bottles, there's very little out there that offers more for your dollar. I mean, there's literally nothing like this anywhere on the domestic market. And even in Mexico, finding something like this would be very, very unusual and difficult. Um, and then, of course, Barril and Barro, the sp splendid mezcals of uh, Tio Rey. Um, you know, not a whole lot out there in this price point offering so much. But this Samuliana, San Luis Potosi, Pal Alma, this is righteous. 
So I'll take you there. Um, cool, guys. Well, that's pretty much all I got today. We've got a bunch of cool interviews getting, getting set up for August. Going all over the world. Um, you know, Tennessee, Australia, um, downtown LA. It's all happening. Uh, Denver, so good to see you, man. Thanks for coming out. Denver notes that these are very two very interesting mezcals. We don't even see many of these in Mexico, where he lives. We miss you, buddy. Can't wait to see you. Um, I'm just going to continue to enjoy this. Any uh, questions? There are a couple people left, but uh, most everybody said good goodbye. No, I think that's it. This has been fun. It's really, really special mezcal, so don't don't wait on those. And uh, I'm gonna just keep, I'm gonna continue smelling this all day after I say goodbye. Wow, wow, so special. Hmm. Just missed out on the one. Don't worry, we have um. Yeah, there was like three bottles that came in. It's stupid. Um, we have a single barrel of Weller Foolproof coming. It should be this week or next week. Um, for all of you who I'm sure are wondering where our smoke wagon single barrels are, they've been delayed. The distillery is um, bottling uh, huge orders of their, their standard line. So uh, expect those um, to get pushed back, hopefully just a couple weeks, but who knows, man, it's a bit of a black box. Um, I'm glad you did. Try some good mezcals. Um, Brian, you like, I shaved just for you, Brian. Yeah, yeah, and my wife. Also, I read recently that beards obstruct, you know, mask, whatever. So, and I'm gonna shave, I'm gonna shave just, you know. Oh, there's so many bearded, masked people in the city, I don't know if it really matters. Uh, all right, Denver's out. Good to see you, brother. Oh, you're in Australia doing work. Good for you. Congrats. Uh, uh, yeah, if you want one of those, um, <laughs> of course you want a Weller. Everybody wants a Weller. It's fine. Yeah, it's fabulous. Yeah, single barrel, single barrel Weller. You know, Oliver's gotten used mostly to the sound of my voice. Um, so I think we'll be okay there. But yeah, it will be a surprise. I was... I was uh, I was bearded before his nap, so we'll see. We'll see what happens after. Um, can't 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 uh, get too far away. Uh, yeah, Elijah Craig barrel proof. Not great news on that, guys. Those are um, those have become back to super scarce. Now we have to. Whereas we used to uh, get Elijah Craig barrel proof from uh, the previous distributor in large quantities, usually as a a way to build toward allocated items, um, which was great because I could take infinite amounts of the stuff. As you guys know, we, we, we all love to drink that. It's one of our favorite bourbons, not a whole lot out there better for 60 bucks. Unfortunately, the new distributor is utilizing it, or maybe that's the, the producer, I don't know, it's political. But uh, they're, they're, now I have to buy a bunch of stuff to get just one bar. I have to buy 10 cases of something else to get one case, three pack case of barrel proof. So there's only so much larceny I can get on the shelf, you know? So, you know, it's gonna be back to one of these here and there, blah, 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 blah. We'll see what happens. Might come through one of these days, but I don't know. When you see it, grab it, cause uh, that's not gonna be one that uh, we're able to stock the way we used to. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have to escalate to, I know, yes, all sad face, teary emoji. Um, it's not gonna be the way it used to. I, I haven't decided whether we're gonna escalate it to the level of, you know, having to reach out to the actual distillery. I'm not sure they would be able to do anything for us, but um, it's just a new world. So we'll see, sorry about that guys. Uh, there is a lot of awesome bourbon coming though. We'll be tasting some uh, this week, better than Weller. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, it's diff different, just different, um, different than Weller. Um, so many good bourbons out there. But um, yeah, Elijah Craig Bale Proof is tough, tough to, uh... yeah, you guys should reach out. I'll tell you what, you, you know, 
Let them know that your local local can't get it anymore. They'll be listening to you more than they will be me. So uh, they know. They know I want it. They know. So everybody knows. But it's a big world of bourbon drinkers out there. So I can't, I mean, I can't blame people for trying to you know, make the best of what they got. Um, but neg negatively affects us and, and our customers. Uh, so, you know, do what you must. You won't be the first of my customers to uh, send Heaven Hill a, a, a disappointed email. Uh, all our bottles are on the website. If we're talking Mezcal, you should be able to just s type in Vago. Pal Alma, maybe under two names. Uh, there's a, an apostrophe in there, so it might be hard to, hard to find. You can definitely find it by typing in Alma Mezcalera. A-L-M-A-M-E-Z-C-A-L-E-R-A. -E -E -E. It's about 130 bucks, but totally worth it. Um, in terms of the bourbons, those are there, you know, for a, a split second, as it tends to go these days. But anyway, guys, good talking to you. Thanks for coming out. We'll be back Thursday. I think, um, what are we tasting Thursday? Something wonderful, I'm sure. Mmm, God, this stuff. Wow. There is nothing like this. Mmm, 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 mmm. Ah, oh, good work today, guys. Thanks for coming out. Ciao.